teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. For every one that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full of age, even those who by reason of use have the senses exercise to discern both good and evil. I just read unto you the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verses 12 through 14. Let us go to God in prayer. Our most holy and righteous Father, we come with bowed heads and humbled hearts, thanking you, Father, for your word. We pray, Father, that we will continue to use it as we strive to make heaven our eternal home. Help us all, Father, to love one another as you love us. Mm -hmm. Open our hearts and our minds to be receptive of your word. 
and that we might show others that you are God and you're God all by yourself. Be with us, Father, as we continue to do your will and we stand boldly on your word in a world that does not know you. Help us to live faithful, to do those things that are necessary to call heaven our eternal home. In Jesus' name we do humbly pray. Amen. 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 On the side of the Lord, and humble thyself on the side of the Lord, oh, Lord. and He will lift you up. Be 
lifted up from the earth will draw men unto me. Oh, just lift them up, lift them up till he speaks from eternity. Oh, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw men unto me. Lift them up by living as a Christian law. Let the world in you, the Savior, see. Oh, just how you 
felt, how you felt when Jesus washed my sins away, my sins away, but since that day, oh yes, since that I, since that I, my God is real, for I can feel His holy power. Oh, my God is real, God is real, He's real in my soul, in my soul. And my God is real, for He has won. Oh, oh, his love for me, don't you know it's like pure gold, like pure gold, and my God is real, for I can feel him in my soul. all say amen. amen. I tell you, Mari gonna make me have to work. Amen. Up here this morning, him and EJ, they make a preacher work. They make the church work. They sing it. They even got a spider up here trying to work a little bit as well. So you done brought the spiders out of the ceiling into worship. And that's a good thing. Because they are in the house of God on this morning. It's just good to see everybody here this morning. And we thank God for, for your presence. We thank God for uh, giving us the ability to be here and to uh, worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. And if you're ever looking for a place to find serenity, it's in the house of God. You can find peace. And you can find a place in which you find uh, that access to God through faith in his word. Amen. The church has been a healing place for many centuries for the people of God. When we look for refuge, we come and assemble ourselves with one another. Amen. We come and we pray together, yes. sing together, cry, yes. and sometimes we even laugh yes. together because we all have something in common. That's right. And that is our relationship with God. Amen. And we're able to, to comfort and encourage one another. Yes, Lord, In fact, I think it was Paul who said to the church at Corinth how much we are able to comfort one another, you know, in difficult times. Mm -hmm. He says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 3, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy and God of all comfort who comfort us in all of our tribulations 
that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort which we ourselves are comforted by God. So I know it is a comforting place when we come together. You may have trouble everywhere, but you can find comfort with God. You may be going through some strange places in your life, but you still can find comfort with God. And that's why it's important that we understand that we are not just somebody, uh, but we are somebody that God made in a peculiar fashion that's right. God. to be his own people. Yes. And therefore, God is able uh, to comfort us in all of our troubles and give us the ability to comfort others who are in similar uh, trouble yes. as well. Amen. Amen. It's just good to be here. Yes, sir. That's not my lesson. <laughs> that I'm going to speak on but sometimes we just need to know who we are and what God is able to do it, to do in our life in the book of Hebrews chapter number 5 verses number 12 through verse number 14 and the Bible says for though by this time you ought to be teachers you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partake, partakes only of milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. I want to use the subject, milky and meaty Christians. Milky and meaty Christians. And why I say that is because uh, Paul said, or the writer said, that some Christian can only use milk, and some can use meat. So therefore, the conclusion is that you have milky and meaty Christians in the church. Now stay with me now because I believe I can prove that on this morning. But the writer is not here uh, to degrade his hearers or his readers. But what the writer here intent is that in chapter number five, he had talked about the qualification of the priesthood and he talked about Jesus Christ who was a priest after the order of Melchizedek. And this seemed to be a problem for some of these Jewish Christians. And they could not understand, they could not put it all together to know the intent of what the writer was saying. And so the writer ended up saying that he had so much to say and hard to explain to these Christians since they have become dull of hearing. Come on, In other words, they didn't want to hear, study. Are y'all following me? On, say it, say it. They were not concerned anymore about growing in Christ Jesus. They had given up uh, their diligence to continue to follow the instructions of God. And so therefore, the writer said, I have a whole lot more to say, but, but y'all can't handle it. Right. Come on. He said, I got a lot I could say. It's hard to explain to you because you have become dull of hearing. It was not they had earwax in the ears. 
They just didn't take the time to study the word of God. They didn't want to be informed about the hard truth and the needed truths of God. And so he, his conclusion was, and is, in verse 12, he said, for though by this time you ought to be teachers, but you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. In other words, you, you need to go back to school. And you need to start from the beginning. Learning the basic requirements or the elementary principles of the doctrine. He said you ought to Right now, I don't know how many years have expanded. Mercy. He said, uh, but, 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 but you know, you, you need to go and study again. You ought to be teaching classes. You ought to be helping other folk Amen. in their maturity. But instead, you need to be taught again the first principles or the oracles of God. Listen to me. What becomes of your life is entirely up to you. But if you're waiting on God to do something about your life, you wait, your wait will be in vain. Because God already did all that's required for you to have an excellent, glorious, and triumphant life. You see, the works of God were finished from the foundation of the world on, in chapter 4 mm -hmm. and verse 3. All you have to do now is to enjoy your life, enjoy everything that the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ have provided for us. Amen. Peter says in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 3. He says, according as the divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Note the tenses. It has happened already. You've been given everything you require for the transcendent life. So God has given us everything we need. Isn't that right? Christianity it's not about praying so that God can do something for us. This is the level of babes in Christ who are yet to come to the understanding of the gospel of Jesus Christ. True Christianity is coming into the knowledge of the word. Understanding the finished work of Christ and what it means for us who believe on his name and laying hold of such promises by faith. Stay with me because I'm going somewhere. As newborn babes in Christ, God may answer your prayers even when you did not pray in faith or in line with the scriptures. But when you grow up, God will stop answering your prayer. You see the time that you say, oh God, uh, please help me. And he will hit you with a silent treatment. In other words, he is actually saying, the time to feed on milk is over. You need to go learn my word and produce what you like to see in your life by faith in my word. In other words, the writers here want these Christians to know that God will stop answering your prayers if you continue where you are. You see, when you obey, God realizes we don't understand everything. Am I right about it? But in the process of time, when you need to have grown up and you're still acting like a child on a baby formula, God will stop answering your prayers because what you need 
to produce in your life is written in the word of God. Huh? Come on. Just like asking somebody to cook two eggs and some bacon for you. And you won't get the eggs and bacon out of the refrigerator. Y'all looking funny. But that's what he's saying. He said, now, God will stop. You got to go and learn the word of God. And produce what you like to see in your life through faith. You see, God's word is the source, foundation and basic our prevailing power in our life, families, and even in our ministries. Amen. It is food and nourishment. It is food for our spirit, Amen. soul, and body. It is nourishment for our minds, our thoughts, and our strength. It supplies health joy and happiness mm -hmm. and brings assurance and faith through which we possess all that we need. Amen. Through his word we have holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Right. And it grants us wisdom, power for living, and strength for our journey toward heaven. God's word, stay with me church, God's word is food, milk, and meat, which we must take regular to be strong, powerful, and unconquerable in the sight of God. I'm going to help somebody today. We must eat it, and we must eat it well. Take it in, chew it, to be to be beneficial, to be benefited from all nutrients, mm -hmm. we must crush it, analyze it, apply it, Amen. break it down, and compare it with our life. Amen. We must masticate, that is to chew, to grind the teeth, to meditate on it, and make it personal in application we need to swallow it let it sink into your heart your brain your mind and your conscience because it is beneficial to your spiritual health you have to start your day with the word of God keep God's word to balance the diet of the word yes. and the doctrine of Christ, yes. which includes salvation, justification, mm -hmm. holiness, healing, deliverance, and etc. Yes. Feed on all the word and different parts of the word of God. Yes. Exercise. Use the strength you gain through the word to evangelize encounter situation endure challenges exemplify and exhibit strength in your life God's word is the source right. foundation yes, and basic our prevailing power in our life Amen. that's why it's so important to the church that we understand what Paul is saying to these Christians. Yes. Amen. He was teaching or the writer was teaching a basic concept of the priesthood of Jesus Christ Amen. and how he came in the same order of Melchizedek. It is something or was something that these Jewish Christians ought to have known. He said, but, he said, you just don't get it. You, you, you ever just talk to people all day? Come on. All your children? 
something out on your job and you'll find a conclusion is you just don't get it. Right. No matter what you say, how you break it down, tear it down, they still don't get it. Right. Am I right about it? Y'all can amen when you, when, you, when you get a chance. They just don't get it. And sometimes in the church, we just don't get it. Am I right about it? It's there, but we can't see uh, to draw it in and to apply it to our life. And so the right here had no other uh, uh, alternative but to say you're just like babes. You ought to be teachers, but you still need milk. And when you stay on milk, most of your life in church, you are a milky Christian. Are you hear what I'm saying? Milky Christian can't take any, any, any criticizing. Are, are y'all with me? Milky Christian, we even get in this sometimes. Milky Christian may not speak to you sometimes. You see, milky Christian, they're unpredictable. You don't know if they're in or out. And so, the writer here wanted to get them beyond their milky stage. And you know, we need to get beyond our milky stage. Sometimes we allow the weather to determine whether we're going to serve God. Company. Are you following me? Visitors. Relatives. Other things that are less important and we allow them to deter or discourage us from serving God. We still don't milk. And we don't need meat yet. You, you know my my great grandbaby, Micaiah, she loves to eat. And every time we eat now, she come. And she don't just look at, she want to grab the whole thing, put her hands in it. And I'll let her do it too. Put her whole hand in it. And she want to grab the toughest part. You know, if you got a pork chop, she want it. But I can't give her pork chop yet. Huh? And what I do is give her the softest food that I have. May take a piece of bread. That's probably all I give her. Oatmeal, something like that. And she loves it. Because she only got four teeth. <laughs> no sense of me putting a pork chop in her mouth. Huh? She can't handle it. Can't chew it. Can't digest it. You see, I have to give her what she's able to digest and to chew. Now, as she get older, then I can gradually, or her mother can gradually give her more food. Isn't that right? But y'all, y'all, y'all missing it. And I'm not going to even keep it long. But y'all still missing it. Huh? We got you had children. Start them off with milk. Put a little papillum in the milk. Huh? Y'all don't use that nowadays. They got some stuff now that skips that. You know, this here got the little baby food. You got, when I was coming up, braised my kid, you had the baby food jars like that. Some were strained. Oh, I know what I'm talking about, though. Then as you get older, then it don't have to be strained. You give them real fruit. Huh? Why? Because they're getting older. They can do more with their mouth. Isn't that right? Well, that's what you have to do with Christians in the church. You can't feed every Christian with the older hand. Because they won't leave the baby bottle alone. Huh? 
They still want the formula. And all they're going to drink is milk. But here we find Peter says in 1 Peter 2 and verse number 2. He says, as newborn babes desire the pure or sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. You have to understand what Peter's saying. Peter said that you need the real stuff. Real milk. Not that formula. You need the sincere milk of the word of God that you may grow thereby. So how do I grow quickly? You got the desire and drink the sincere milk of the word of God. All right. But before you can have that desire and drink properly, there is something you got to empty out of your life and purge out from your system. Listen to what he says in verse 1 of First Peter chapter 2. He says, Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit or guile, all hypocrisy, and envy, and all evil speaking. Now y'all missed that. He said you got to get to the point you quit playing around. Right. Laying aside all of that malice that you have harbored up over the years. Yeah. All of this seat or guile, hypocrisy, the envy, and all evil speaking. Mm -hmm. all right. If this milk of the word is to do us good, we must desire it and not despise it. Drink it and not display it. Do it and don't delay it. Demonstrate it and don't dodge it. Declare it and don't decline it. Defend it and don't dilute it. As you take in the word, you will grow thereby according to what Peter says. But you got to help yourself out of some stuff. Huh? That's why we can't grow. We got too much stuff in them. Huh? Come on now. Want me to get nasty with you? Come on, preacher. Huh? Sometimes you can't eat what you want to eat because you got too much stuff already in you. Huh? Allow me to say it. Sometimes we get so much already in our stomach, the only way to get some more in, we, we got to have some kind of movement. We have to clean our system. Y'all looking funny. And you know I'm telling the truth. Huh? And when you clean the system, you ready to eat again. Mm -hmm. Look at y'all, y'all funny, y'all funny to me. Everybody got proper now. It was amen, amen. Now. But that's what you have to do. Huh? You have to clean the system. Huh? Now listen. Peter says the same thing, and you're not mad at him. Isn't that right? Peter said. Before you can grow, before you can have the sincere milk of the word of God, he said, you got to lay aside all malice, all deceit, all guile, hypocrisy, and envy, and all evil speaking. You got to take all of that out of your system. The mind no worse than his. Oh, y'all looking funny. And when you do it, 
you will grow in grace, faith, conviction. That is, you can take your stand where others will compromise. You have courage, no intimidation. You will have strength higher today than yesterday. Victory, breakthroughs in all areas of your life. When you desire the sincere milk of the word of God. Then verse 13. I'm through now whether well, you believe it or not. He says, for everyone who partakes only of milk is unskillful in the word of of righteousness for he still obey. Mm -hmm. Notice everyone he says who partakes only milk mm -hmm. is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Let me suggest this. If all you drink all day, I'm physical sad now, mm -hmm. is milk, you're going to be unskillful. Huh? Now, now, I don't care how strong your system is. If you drink milk all day long, you're going to be unskillful mm -hmm. in some areas. That's true. You're going to be walking. And you're going to be gassing up places everywhere you go. And the sad part, listen to me, I'm serious about what I'm saying. Come on. And the sad part about it is, it gets to a point you can't even control it. Huh? You get to walk and lift up your legs. That's unskillful. Huh? Amen. Get ready to sit down. Uh -oh. Unskillful. <laughs> when you have to walk and you trying to hold everything, unskillful. I know you ain't had to preach like this before. I know that. But it's unskillful. And it gets so bad that sometimes you just got to let go. <laughs> let it come with me. <laughs> and tell folk it's better on the outside <laughs> than the inside. And I'm serious a heart attack. But that's the only analogy that I can come up with. And I, and I don't have a book about analogies. I just come up with it as I, as I see it. But that's what it means. Unskilled, you can't handle what God wants you to handle in the right way. Because you're still on milk. You, you, you can't skillfully do what God wants you to do. So if you can't do it skillfully, you just do it haphazardly. You just do it. You know, you don't know what's going to happen. And when it's going to happen. But solid food, verse 14, belongs to those who are of full age. That is those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Right. Solid food, strong meat belongs to those who can have it. Right. Who have by reason of use 
have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You know, solid food, when you can eat solid food, it helps your body. Yes. You can go on a regimen or a diet that can really give you the nutrients to sustain your physical body. Isn't that right? Amen. And allow you to grow or to mature in life or spiritually as a Christian. Mm -hmm. Because now you're not just taking uh, drinking and taking in milk. Mm -hmm. You're taking in all the nutrients. That's right. You're Amen. taking in vegetables. You're taking in uh, 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 you, you know the stuff they require you know to, to, for a healthy body. Mm -hmm. But in the sense of the word of God you're taking in all the nutrients that are required for a healthy spiritual life Amen. that God has given us. Isn't that right? Yes, and then when you look at strong meat and I'm going to tell you the secret to that meat the meat of, of the word of God that we should grow or be able to take is the meat of growing as a child of God in all facets of our life. Number one, John 4, 34, Jesus said unto them, my meat, get it now, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Now, if that's Jesus' meat, why should my meat be any different? You see, if I follow the same meat that Jesus used or, or took in, we can find the general definition are uh, what real meat of the word of God really is. Right. And that meat is to search the word, to learn what God demands of us in his, in his service, and then do what God requires. Amen. We have to learn to dig deeply and immerse our lives into God's word and his service. And we must learn to conform into the very image of Jesus Christ so we can perform our calling to God's expectation. Amen. So if Jesus meet is to do the will of God and he is the son of God and we are children of God, we have the, God require the same expectation from us. Now it's up to you yes. whether you want to be a milky Christian or a meaty Christian. Right. It's up to you. That's right. But God has made it possible for every person here mm -hmm. to be a meaty mm -hmm. Christian. Because that will come a time in your life milk won't help you. You're going to need some meat. It may come in a form of sickness. It may come through the loss of a loved one. You're going to need some real meat. You're going to need some meat like Psalm the 23rd chapter. You're going to need some meat like John chapter 14. You're going to need some meat like 2 Corinthians 1 and verse number 3 and follow. You're going to need some meat that will help you get through the difficult and trying times of your life and that milky stuff that you keep drinking will not suffice. Amen. You're going to need it. Now you want to stay a milky Christian? Huh? Or you want some real meat? Meat makes you strong. Huh? Help you 
to develop strength, help you uh, to maintain uh, all of your body chemicals and, and help you to discharge the waste that you don't need. Because you're you real stuff now. Huh? If I had time, I could really get nasty with it, but I'm not. But, 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 but I just want to make a distinction what a milky Christian is mm -hmm. and what is a meaty Christian. Right. A meaty Christian will try to conform their lives into the image of Christ, doing everything in their power and all the, in their ability that God has given them mm -hmm. through Jesus Christ to conform to his will in both word, deed, and life. Mm -hmm. That's what me, the Christian, is all about. Amen. If you're here this morning and you're not a Christian, why don't you become one? We know when you start off, you're going to be on milk, mm -hmm. but you can't stay on it. That's right. You got to grow. Right. Learn how to grow, desire to grow, mm -hmm. and taste the sincere milk of the, word, of the word of God so you can keep on growing. Amen. And after a period of time, you tell somebody, I have a teacher, preacher, elders, a deacon, somebody that I need to grow with. I, I need you to put me somewhere where I can grow Amen. even more. That's right. Amen. Get me involved in some ministry of the church Amen. so I can grow and develop my spirituality so I can have some skills of righteousness to possess in my life. Amen. And when you do that, you become what God will have you to become. Amen. And you do it by faith in God. Faith in his word. Hebrews 11 verse 6. Without faith, you can't please God. Amen. Secondly, you've got to repent of your sin. You got to come with a mindset that whatever God says, you're ready to do it. Even if it's different from what you've been doing all of your life, you got to be willing to change in the direction that God wants you to go in. And that is a change of mind towards sin as it relates to God that results in the way we live the rest of our life. Amen. Confess with our mouth what our heart believes. If your heart believes that Jesus the Christ, the Son of God, you ought to confess it. Let somebody know. If none other, let the Lord know. I trust you as my Savior and as my Redeemer. Amen. Walk down these aisles. Give me your hand, but give God your heart. And say, I want to be baptized for the remission of my past sin. And in baptism, God washes away your sin in water by the blood of Jesus Christ. And when you come up out of the waters of baptism, you come up a new creation of God. Old things, the past sin, all of that stuff, all of that foolishness is washed away. God now brings you up a new creature. In Jesus Christ. And the only sins you'll be liable or accountable for. Are the sins that you commit after becoming a Christian. But God gave you a spiritual eraser. That if you sin and we will sin. That we can repent. That's the spiritual eraser. God provides for us. To overcome our future sins. If you hear you're a member of the church, if I've said anything this morning, my intent, my purpose Amen. is to get us beyond where we are. Amen. All of us can grow Amen. and be more in God's kingdom. All right. Amen. But we have to desire it. Mm -hmm. It won't happen. It will not come unless you desire it to come. Right. It's almost like being sick. 
and, and, you, and you want to get well. If you don't desire to get well, you'll never go to the doctor. You'll never go. But if you desire to get better, you're going to put forth some kind of effort to get to the right source to make you better or to help you feel better. That's the way it ought to be in the church. And I believe in my heart, all of us want to be better and get better. But you got desire. If you here and you desire to get better, we ask you to come. Maybe it's through prayer, maybe through repentance or past sins, whatever it may be. We invite you to come as together we stand and together we sing.